Energy host for like we right. were we were doing the show for like months. Like the original team, uh, the, the 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 host changed, the whole situation changed, and still right. like literally like half a year later, people would come into the chat and they'd be like, "Who the fuck are these people? Like, where's, <laughs> where's yeah. Teft? What what am I looking at?" When did we get a boy band in here? Where's Tefty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we, st- we that still, still that. happens. <laughs> That's it's actually funny. in some ways gotten much worse. <laughs> Good God. But right oh. on, man, it, it was, um, it's, it's great to have you here tonight. And it's, uh, Good it's, to a, be particularly, here. Yeah, it's a particularly nostalgic moment for me as, uh, as, as somebody who's gone through multiple iterations of this show and seeing you on here. Is his flooding me with memories of of you know the old crew with Mega? God oh wow, bless yeah. that man and uh, that Story guy. Machine bo- boy band Bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot that Bones was on the show. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Uh, you man, know, dude, so much time has did. gone by. Yeah, it's crazy. What, I, I, where have you been? What you been up to, man? Me? I don't know. I'm just yeah. I'm just doing my own thing, man. I'm I. Uh, I'm full time content creator now. Yep. We're we're approaching a year. No, we're approaching two full years. I think I went full time in February of 2019. Right. And uh, yeah, doing my thing, working my butt off, making making content, making deals. You know, trying to <laughs> stay busy, keep my nose out of trouble. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's me. It's it's so nice to be, to be back here with you guys. How how's everybody been doing? It's been fun. It's been uh it's been a lot of fun. I still miss you dearly. Like oh, man, likewise. get him out of here. Dan Infinity? <laughs> yeah. Please. No. I, it's you I've missed. <laughs> this guy. It's he you. says that at the start of every uh podcast. <laughs> no, it's, don't listen, that's ruin, how he, don't that's ruin how he the starts. magic. That's how he starts. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> the the five, the five to ten minutes before the show goes live, you know, when we come in and we I wish you, sure. that's he how just, it starts. He just looks straight into the camera into my eyes and he goes, <laughs> I wish you were fallout. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. I wish you guys were guy. fallout. <laughs> so <sighs> funny. Nim is such a poor stand in for Mega Mag, which this is what fact. am I doing? That's that's ne- that's never been true ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's his ritual. He says that it's his ritual every every time. Oh, it's how I get into things. <laughs> sure, it hurts your feelings, like... but you know it's it's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's showbiz, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if they if they say I'm discount Tefty, you could be discount Mega. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> you know, but you know, like... even though you know you, you left the show a while ago, it's not like you've become a stranger to podcast Fallout. No, you no. Uh, you kind of host your own, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, that was really interesting thing. I, I don't think a lot of people out there realize how much work it is <laughs> to run a podcast. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, people have been like, "Well, we like, I like hearing you talk about things." And I was like, "Well, that's cool," but like, yeah, I don't like working, and <laughs> <laughs> I I already do content and like live streaming pretty much from this is not a joke from like the minute I wake up like yeah <laughs> like maybe half an hour before I go to bed I'm like constantly working and um yeah our uh, our old friends at the uh, at the Destiny Community podcast we we know them we love them they uh they reached out to me for it, it was supposed to be just kind of like a side deal mm-hmm. we're yeah. like hey how about you and a couple of the other guys who are who are way too involved in the sandbox of the game why don't you come on and talk about I can't remember what it was. I think we were arguing about hand cannons or something stupid like that. <laughs> um, Ranger stability or something like that. And we uh, we did like a little side spiel about a really deep sandbox talk. And a lot of people liked it. It's got, it was me, uh, Cami, cool guy, Drewski, and Merc from Massive Hi. Breakdown. Yeah, and they were like, well, we would love you to do this more. And I'm like, well, I would love to not do work. And uh, <laughs> so, so they said they would pretty much take care. All we have to do is kind of come sure. together and just yeah show up and have a talk and uh and they'll just take care of everything else that's the ideal which is, situation it's the ideal podcast <laughs> the situation yeah so yeah it's it's just been fun uh just another way of uh talking about the game that we still like to play with a couple of uh chill homies and it's been fun yeah and it's uh it's an entertaining show one in my opinion it kind of has spiritually replaced the old crucible radio show Mm. yeah a little bit god love those guys uh they um (laughs) 
I barely talk to those guys. And it's not for it's it's my fault. It's hundred percent my fault. Mm-hmm. Uh they're off doing their own thing. I think yeah. I'm raise your hand if you agree with me, but like I love being involved in content creation. I love being involved in the community. I think the work is fun. I love the community. Yeah, we all do. But um it, it gets tiring. And uh yes. like there there are times when yeah. God man, like shit'll hit the fan. Oh yeah. And like, you know, there's always like the weekly Twitter war about God knows what. Oh, yeah. Right. And right. like the thing <laughs> yeah. that you don't think is going to like maybe <laughs> affect your mood that day. Yeah. Totally does. <laughs> and it totally does. Yeah. And then people are arguing about matchmaking and we're like, God, we're having this again argument again. You gotta be kidding me. Same thing. But um I think it I think it just wore a little thin on the CR boys. Uh, a lot of and especially they had focused on the PvP community, mm-hmm. which can be brutal like uh it's just it's a lot of really really angry let's say heated really really opinionated heated discussions in the P- in the pvp community so i thought their show was great i thought that they uh they went out on a good note oh yeah and and yeah it's it's been fun to for the most part talk about a lot of things that i i think that they would have talked about also they uh <laughs> things we talk about that they probably would have not touched with the 10 foot pole including like yeah. you, you know anytime there's matchmaking drama sure we'll talk about it <laughs> anytime there's i don't know it, not real drama video game drama right you know oh right. we should skill based matchmaker or connection based they yeah. usually don't like talking about stuff like that but it's like yeah f it we'll t- talk about it who cares but and I, that's part of the crazy allure of you guys' show. You dive into a lot of the more fascinating aspects of the crucible side of Destiny. You know, we, 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 I'm sure everybody has heard of some of the interviews uh, that you guys have gotten to, uh, to give and take part of. Learning yeah. about how some of these perks and some of these weapons work, learning about how the matchmaking might be working, how these systems are affecting the overall Crucible environment, it's fascinating. It's one of the things I loved about Crucible Radio, and it's one of the things that, you know, you guys, like you said, you, you, you take up some of the more controversial topics more readily sometimes. It's why I love listening to you guys' show, I think maybe even more so. Plus, God, dude, I love I Merc. Could, I, could, I, could just, I could just sit here, yeah. and I could, I could just listen to TBL. <laughs> Talk. It's like, dude, I, you were, you were like, just shower you praise born, upon you. Yeah, you like, sit here listening to me shower he, praises. He, no, can, it's not even that. It's just like you were born in radio mode. Like, it's just you, you talk so good. Like, he talks good, man. Come on, don't deny that, no, the boy. TBL, he, he talks, talks so the good. goodest out of he's all of the, us. He's got the golden pipes, man. It's just, it's always, <laughs> it sounds fresh. Like, I don't know. I could just, just, yeah. He's, well, he's, you, better. he's better than all of us. Just, yeah. just the one you. thing I've got going for me is the fact that uh, as soon as I came out the womb, I turned towards the doctor and said, <laughs> at 7.58 p.m. on this Tuesday, I arrived. <laughs> My God. He didn't slap me and made me cry. Yeah. <laughs> the crying sound good. I- I'm told that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But no, dude, it's it's the same for you, you know, the, the the level of expertise when it comes to a game like this. It's, on one hand, kind of crazy to think that you can have a level of expertise about the inner workings of specific weapons in a video game. Yeah. But you and all of your co-hosts do have that. And it's fascinating listening to the different experiences there between you and, like, Mercules and everybody else. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a compendium of knowledge that you would not expect to be tied to a video game like this. Yeah. And you guys cover it in great fashion. It, it's it's pretty fun. And we all come from, we all have different kind of uh, play styles, I guess you would say. Like uh, yeah. Cammy, Cammy is 100% M&K. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all PC, all M&K. Drew is all controller. Uh, cool guy is like 95% controller, 5% M&K. I'm like 60 40. Like, I go back and forth depending on what loadout I'm rocking. Like, if I'm rocking right. DM, DMT or whatever, like, yeah, I'm going to go MK. Uh, you know, Ace of Spades, yeah, I'll, I'll go MK. If I'm using something like, I don't know, Shira's Wrath, I'll go controller. So I like to go back and forth. Uh, and, and Merc is all console. So we kind of have the PC, uh, the PC area covered, the console area covered, all in between. Uh, yeah. And we, and even though we all love to talk about the game, <laughs> plenty of times where we'll bash heads it's very easy when you know someone you know and you know their opinions 
uh, very deeply involving a video game. It's very easy to set up bait or triggering moments. Like if you want to make, uh, if you want to make cool guy mad, I guess there's, there's just like, I'm just trying to think of all the, the topics that you could very easily bring up that would make people on the show mad. Like you want to make Merc mad, just start talking crap about the monarch. He loves the monarch. Like <laughs> if you start, if you start saying it's like, oh yeah, only, well, only bad people use bows or whatever. Like, or like, or yeah, like the bastion takes no skill. Like he'll just like, <laughs> he knows I'm trying to bait him, but it's still a That's good conversation off. anyway. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's fun, fun conversating for sure. You know, there's a concept in DC Comics uh, in the Justice League that Batman has a compendium of how to basically take down every other member of the league, like all oh, yeah. I was 58 of them. Literally, <laughs> I was literally thinking that right now, TBL. It's my dude, Nim. That's, that's, that's funny. So that I, I just see you fall out in front of a big Batman-sized computer. <laughs> oh, I get like to be Batman? Computer. Ooh. Yeah. This is how I'm going to mess with cool guy today. This is what I'm going to, this is going to work. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how you do it. But you know, it's 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 definitely good stuff, and I and and you said something there about about the difference of experience that you guys bring to the table. You've got some people playing on console, you've got most sure. of the others on PC. You've got some people who play with controllers, some people who play with mouse and keyboard. And it brought up this this thought to me: I play both with mouse or mouse and keyboard and controller on Destiny. Oh, and I can't think of any other game that I do that with. Yeah, no, I. That's a really good point. I also cannot think of another game that i do that with i uh i play i play a bunch of dead by daylight these days uh yeah. try to get nem in there nem is big on it if you guys aren't playing dead by daylight you're missing out big time but um uh i think nem you play controller right mm -hmm. on yep. yeah and i'm a hundred percent on dead by daylight all m and k all day it's for me it's just it feels way better to play that way but yeah i, do, I don't can't really think of another game where I do both. Yeah, it's just that's kind of an interesting thing about oh. Destiny, you know, with where the difference is there. You know, with most first person shooters on, on PC, people are generally just going mouse and keyboard. Yeah. But, you know, with the mixture of aim assist and the way the guns feel and a lot of that stuff, with Destiny, it's a game where, like, honestly, I feel like I could perform about the same, whether I use mouse and keyboard or controller. Yeah. There, there are different highs and lows in terms of the skill floor and the skill ceiling there. But the middle, the average range is, I'd, I'd say, remarkably similar there. There was a lot of people when Destiny came to PC who were really concerned about having to play with controller, uh, playing with a controller on PC and being dominated by people with mouse and keyboard. And I'd say all these years later, now the average experience is you'll be able to do just fine. Yeah, yeah. It's um, there there are some weapons in the sandbox that like really favor. Yeah. Like yeah, like if if people come into my Twitch chat or whatever and they're like. Hey, I'm new to the game. What should I use in PvP? It's like the first question I always ask them. I'm like, okay, what do you play on M and K or controller? Right. Because like it's always gonna change. Like, so if someone's like, I'm on controller, then I would never recommend like Dead Man's Tale. Although maybe in December, like, because they're mm. making that change to the thing, which is kind of neat. But like for the most part, it's like, oh yeah, don't <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> if you're Stop. if you're M and K, yeah, don't use the last word or something like that you know what i mean like there's different recommendations for for different ways to play the game right no absolutely and uh that's you know one of the things you can hear when you go listen to fallout you hit up his <laughs> channel you hit up his podcast all this good stuff <laughs> this man does time loss rankings he does zer or zer videos in under a minute now which is oh, oh, beautiful man. marketing <laughs> can i tell you kind of just really quickly i'm gonna i'm gonna rant about that zer video i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little 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 spiel here do it <laughs> hold on we I, haven't had a fallout rant on this show in years i'm ready I, I started that format on youtube because i was like how do i stand out how do i do something different everyone you know doing zer whatever you know who used to be the king of zer the undisputed king of zer was datto way yeah. back when datto was the zer guy uh, I don't know if you guys went to the original, like the first two or three Guardian Cons back in Florida before <clears throat> things happened. But um, yeah, so I remember being in Guardian Con in Florida for like the first or second Guardian Con mm -hmm. and everybody was out partying. I had came back to the hotel. God knows why. I don't know. Get a change of clothes or something like that before I go get crunk at the bar. <laughs> and uh and 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 in the hotel lobby is Datto, and he's at a computer. I don't know if he brought it 
I don't know if it was like, I can't remember if it was a big tower. It might've just been a really fancy like travel laptop or whatever. And so he's got a computer in the lobby and he's making the Zer video. He's at Guardian Con. He's making <laughs> the Zer video on a Friday. Yeah. And um, I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> and he's, yeah. he's like, who are you? How dare you speak to me? <laughs> and uh, that was just his thing for a really long time. But then I guess when Zer only had... It was the same thing over and over. So Dad yep. was like, I'm going to move on to different content. And I was like, I'll do it. I'll do it in a different format that I think could be like maybe a little bit more funny. Because yeah, the, the Zer stuff is... It can be... For a long time, it was pretty bland. I was like, I'll make it funny. And then out of nowhere, it was like, oh, by the way, legendary weapon drops from Zer. I was like, crap. Yeah. Because <laughs> now we have a golden... I don't know how much... I mean, you guys all know. You're all familiar with the YouTube yeah. game. Like... Right. If you're at home and you're not familiar with the YouTube game, uh, YouTube prefers long content. They they don't like for really big YouTubers who uh, oh, what is that guy? Oh god, the dude who does all those really funny YouTube videos. What's his name? City something? Who's that dude? He's so funny. Oh, it's gonna kill me. I'm gonna think of it at like <laughs> three in the morning. There's a bunch of YouTubers who have really great short form uh, content. But you probably have to really establish yourself over a long period of time to, oh, yeah. to get you know, the short form pushed right. in the algorithm. And like even if you may if even even if you're king of the short form content, you can always earn more with long form content. So uh, I was like, oh, here's a golden opportunity for me to make longer Zer videos that I can actually get money from. Cause like right now, the one minute you I don't know, again, it's like you're not making nothing. I, I pretty <laughs> much make nothing off my one minute Zer video. I make <laughs> I make dick. I make nothing. If I wanted to, I could actually have content to talk about because now he has all the legendary armor and the weapon rolls. You could probably get relatively deep into it. You could at least make like five minutes out of it. Right. But uh, <laughs> but so many people are like, no, you can't do it. Don't change it. <laughs> like, Perfect oh. the way it is. You found the sauce. I know. Keep the it's sauce. Like, and then people still come into to Twitch chat and they're like, oh, you're like, I love the Zer video. It's so funny. And it's like, damn it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't change it now, even though I so easily could, and I could actually get money from the Zer videos. But the Just people like TikTok. the short content; they like the short content. Right. So throw it up on it. TikTok. I'm sure, like, I'm sure you could get, you could start making that TikTok money. All the kids yeah. are out running for <laughs> <laughs> make money on the old talk. On the old talk. That's <laughs> yeah, that's everybody's doing it. At least that's Damn. what I hear. Uh, yeah, that's 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 my spiel on the Zer video. And God help you if you miss a Friday, because good Lord, did, oh yeah, does this community freak out if they don't get a Zer video from somebody? It's every also week? it's also terrible because out of every <laughs> video format I can do, it's uh very few of them are like time gated, right? Like, yeah. So uh, the two things or the couple things that you really have to move quickly on as a content creator. Kids, take notes at home. Uh, if there's a new raid, if there's a new dungeon, pretty much anything new. Uh, yeah. But the but oh, the yeah. tier the tier list is like raid number one. Yep. Uh, if you know the, Rick Hackus is usually always the first one to put out a raid guide, and they always break like a million on YouTube. They somehow gets those guides out before the content Dude, drops. I, I have no idea. Rick Hackus, he will magic. He he burns through the raid. He'll get the raid guide out first. He won't sleep. Datto also will. Remember when Last Wish came out? Yeah. He was already up. He was already awake for 24 hours doing Last Wish. Uh, hashtag 2402. And uh, <laughs> when he finished, he didn't go to bed. He stayed up to make the raid guide because that's, that's crazy. It's, yeah, it's a, it's literally a gold rush of content, mm -hmm. but you you can't put it off. So, you know, lower on the tier list, but still very time sensitive is Zer because mm -hmm. it comes out on Friday and there's only so much time you have before everybody will know what Zer has. Mm -hmm. No one is yeah. watching a Zer video on Sunday because they already know what he has. Yep. Uh, so people don't know this because they tweet at me every week. They're like, hey, asshole, where's the fucking Zer video? And I'm like, dude. <laughs> It, it takes time. You know, like, <laughs> I get. I think that they think it's like, oh, it's a one minute video. It must take easy. Yeah, it, it must. It must take one minute to put together. It's like, dude, it takes a lot of time because you have to yep. write the script. I got to write it very short. You have to mm -hmm. write it within within a one minute because if you go over one minute, people freak out. Yeah, people don't so know you have how to, hard it's like one it. page. 
<laughs> yeah, like you have yeah. to. I have to make. I have to write it and be like, okay, is this too short, too long? It has to be the right length. You got to write it so it's funny. And then I have to record audio and talk like the micro machine guy. Like yep. if it's if it's too yep. long, I have to be like, oh, and I have to really record it quick. And then you cut it together, and then you put the footage on top of the audio. And people like someone was confused. It's like I don't understand. Like Rick Hackus's video was like eight minutes. How did he get his video out before you? It's like. Bitch, because he's just sitting there like, no, I love Rick to death. This is not shade of Rick yep. Hackus because he's yeah. a fucking homie. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, he'll he'll just sit down at Zer and he will live record, which is very yeah. difficult mm -hmm. to do for for content yeah. creation. And he'll just be like, hey, everybody, Rick, you know, Engram opening CAC is here. <laughs> and today we're going to look at Zer's inventory, you know, in November, blah, blah, blah. And he'll go through like and just kind of off the cuff record, which is much smoother it's, it's you know it's much yeah, easier yeah, of an editing class. process and then he'll just take that and brrr, just put it up on the channel meanwhile i'm like an idiot like trying to do all this work for one <laughs> so, format of video that's not making me any goddamn money were you were you ever any good at haiku <laughs> oh <laughs> is that a certain haiku <laughs> yeah. it took me like three days to put out so proud of myself triples the production time <laughs> like uh no, but, like for real though, people uh, people don't understand the kind of work that goes into productions like this, and it's something yeah. you brought up earlier. You know, <laughs> into this, you don't want to work hard, but you do. No. Like, yeah, goddamn. Back in the day, like I can remember doing radio spots and, and doing commercials for radio, and it's like a thirty oh. second, a thirty second spot. You think people will think, oh, it's only thirty seconds. It takes you thirty seconds to read this full <laughs> page and a half of, of stuff. No, yeah. it takes a long time to get that down, to get it edited right, to get it put out within the time frames, and still get like the contact information and all of that. It's multiplied by ten when it yeah. comes to making videos. Yeah, it might be a one minute Zer video, but that's recording time. It's audio recording time. It's editing yeah. time. It's script work. It's rendering. It's uploading. It literally takes me an hour. Yeah, like, it takes a long every time. time. A minute. Yeah. I remember when uh, the Whisper mission came mm. out. Oh yeah. man! Because uh, I were I was the one who worked on that guide for for Planet Destiny. Oh. Uh, I think the overall video was about maybe ten minutes ish. Uh, sure. The actual editing and like producing <laughs> the video was about like twelve hours. Yeah. yeah. From gathering yeah. the footage, from doing the script, from the editing figuring out where like each of the individual different like bosses spawned and then like the puzzle because it was fresh mm -hmm. yeah so like i literally did not sleep until like i had everything yeah put together a lot of work and, and yeah it is. it is and for some people uh they know i'm not gonna name names here because i don't want anyone to go do any digging and throw shade it's, Jarv, it's right? not it's not it <laughs> no <laughs> i'm not talking about that Although that is an interesting side <laughs> side shoot <laughs> you bring up. Now, this is back when the Whisper mission dropped. And um, because it if you guys remember in Destiny, I was just I think I was just streaming or whatever, and then like out of nowhere, or maybe I was at work, I don't even know, but out of nowhere it was like, oh my god, there's a new hidden thing. It just <laughs> dropped. Like, yeah. what is this? It's the thing that you like and Bungie didn't promote it. Yep. It was found, and people were freaking out doing the whisper mission. And uh I went on YouTube to try and get an, an idea of like, cause when you become a content creator and you're like, you're full time to a degree spoilers and whatever goes out the window. So if you ever, yeah. mm -hmm. if you yeah. ever really care about, you know, mm -hmm. experiencing things fresh, you, you have to kind of compromise if you want to be a content creator. Cause uh, you're going to be able to be more prepared to make more informed content. If you know everything about whatever topic before you go in. So I opened up YouTube and there was a Destiny YouTuber, again, not going to mention who. And uh, they had like, oh, new quest, hidden quest, or here, like, you know, full guide or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I clicked it open. And it was not a full guide. <laughs> it, was pr it was pretty much them saying, hey, everybody, uh, this new quest dropped. And it's like, it came out of left field. And uh, I've only been able to get this far at the moment. Like, it, they literally had gone <laughs> oh, through no. maybe about three minutes of, first room. of, oh, no. of like yeah like the, the first two rooms and that was it it was like a six minute video full guide and, bro. and it, it, it didn't show the weapon didn't show anything it was like and yeah so like this like this video of like like and i'll keep doing the rest of the guide and i was like what is this and like i to i totally get it 
because you're put in a difficult yeah. position, right? Because yeah. yeah. if you're you have to late, rush for it. Yeah, it's because if you're late to the table, you're pretty much boned. So some oh, people yeah. try to compromise and just try to get anything out early that they can, uh, regardless of of length. So it can be, it can be pretty tricky uh, with the, the 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 content that you need to rush to do. I just picture that video ending with more at eleven. <laughs> That's it. More after this. Word from our sponsors. We've gotten to a green room. There seems to be a jumping puzzle involved. Ward 11. It's, yeah. like a, it's, it's literally, not a full guide. It's literally like that. Uh, yeah. This is an interesting conversation we got going on. Yeah, I, I talked to a couple of people who are, you know, full-time content creation, and mm -hmm. they're telling me that they're like, yeah, I'm taking off like a bunch of time in January, which is can be potentially dangerous, air quotes yeah. when you're a content creator because if you leave your youtube channel unattended or even your twitch if you don't go live on twitch for like days weeks at a time then the algorithm can <laughs> take yeah. its revenge on you mm -hmm. youtube vastly favors content in the algorithm that is just pushed out more frequently yep so uh people are trying to make the hard decision but i think it's the right one for them it's like they're going to try yeah. and Put content on the back burner, which is what I did when I went to Alaska for two weeks. I put, mm -hmm. I uploaded videos to YouTube and I had them scheduled to release at a certain time. Right. And then you take off time in January because February, Witch Queen. Yeah. So we have a whole gold rush. Like my fiance and my family knows that when we have large waves of content coming. And now my real estate agent knows because I'm, I'm Anna and I are looking for a home. Yeah. And yeah, right. And she's uh, the real estate agent. Is like, okay, so what's your window? And it's like, okay, you have to understand that uh, <laughs> goddamn witch queen dropping in February. She's like, what does that mean? I was like, don't interrupt me. I <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it's, you, you have to explain to people that like, yeah, I'm gonna become a hermit yeah. in, in in February briefly for my job. Like, you don't understand. Like, there's gonna be really. I love being a content creator. It's the most fun job I've ever had. Yeah. I have, I have never put this many hours. When I had a nine to five job, mm. holy cow, my level of care is like rock bottom. Like I had my, my job before, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying this, but my, my job before full-time content creation, I worked at an advertising agency. Uh, it was a paycheck. I was not passionate about administrative mm -hmm. work. I, I don't care. It's just me earning and my thankfully my boss was great and the company was okay but uh <laughs> i yeah it's like dude five o'clock hits or five thirty, whatever out i'm out don't call <laughs> yeah. me don't text like i'm gone like but you'll never advance your career i i don't care <laughs> it's just, I'm going home <laughs> doing what i do and then it was especially don't call me or don't text me because i would come home and try to work on youtube content and yep. i would stream on twitch i was i was like doing like two jobs it's and a uh, it's a lot of work and now that i'm full time i have more flexibility in my own schedule but still i have never worked this many hours like in my life like i'll be it'll be like one as long as it's like you know what i mean if i spend time with my family or if i spend time with anno sure mm. i'll be i'll be focused on that yeah but but if um, and I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm just gonna like, my friends invited me to play monster hunter. Are you like, are you okay with that? And I'm like, go for it. Like, so she'll play with her friends and it's like, I have nothing else to do. I'm just going to work. Yeah. And it'll, it'll, it'll be like one thirty in the morning, two in the morning. She's still playing monster hunter. I'm like, I guess I'm still going to work. Still working. <laughs> I've, I've never worked this many hours, but at least I find my, my job enjoyable. Heck yeah. Yeah. And you know, that that's an important sort of thing to put out there because a lot of the times, you know, we always I think everybody here has heard this question thousands of times. How do I get started doing this? How do I get into streaming and whatnot? How should I look at it? And that's one of the things I tell them. Look at it as a job. Because it's it's gonna be if you want to do it full time, it's gonna be a job. Yeah. It's gonna be a, a lot of work. It'll be a lot of fun. It yeah. should be a hobby of yours that you turn into a job. But yeah. If you're doing this thing full time. It's work. You're constantly making content, constantly 100%. live streaming, constantly prepping the next bit of content that you're going to be doing. Also, be young. <laughs> be young. Don't be, be young. Don't, don't, don't be us. Like it's, it's, it's rough. Like if you want to get yeah. started, if you want to get started 
it's much easier. Not impossible. There's plenty of people in like, you know, in my age bracket, aka dinosaur, who are who are making a <laughs> killing on YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. Which is great. Good for them. But like when you're young, you have less on the table that you need to worry about. Maybe you're living at home with your parents. Great. Who cares? Do that. Um yeah, it's great. Great time to get started. You don't you don't got bills to pay, you don't got a mortgage, you don't got kids. I uh, the dream. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> the dream, baby. No bills, no mortgage. Get I can rig. eat ramen and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Not out of a necessity, but out of just God. an innate need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the way to get started. And yeah. uh, c come up with a battle plan, treat it like a job. It's true, TBL, very true. Yeah. And uh and go hard. And there you go. Be consistent. But man, you know, February's coming and Witch Queen's coming. Yep. And oh, it's yeah. always this weird dichotomy of feelings where it's like, ooh, new content. Oh God, new content. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. I, I I've I've got a lot of high hopes for Witch Queen, and we'll certainly uh, pick your brain about a few of those as oh, we yeah. actually get to talking about Destiny on this <laughs> Destiny show. Oh wait, we just, we're supposed to talk about Destiny on this episode? Oh right, right, right. right. Surprisingly, this is not a, a, a how to get into content creation show. Although I think it works excellently <laughs> as uh, as as that sort of topic. Yeah. <laughs> We do have some uh, some crazy stuff going on. You know, I, I couldn't think of a more perfect guest to have on than you, Fallout, to no. talk about a lot of the uh, the the sandbox changes. Sure, that we're going to be getting. Oh heck yeah! There's uh, some pretty interesting stuff coming. You know, we got the Vex Mythic class nerf coming. We've got an interesting change to stuff like Whisper of the Worm and Darcy. I'm assuming you've had an opportunity to go through uh, the sandbox changes that they've talked about. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Was there anything in particular that stood out to you that you? Uh, Yes. You most? Well, I'll I'll answer I'll answer half of that question. Uh, there were things that immediately leapt out of me. I I get into this. I've gotten. I don't know how this started. I get into this great tradition where every Thursday, uh, we do like the TWAB waiting room on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People love the TWAB, so like they'll they'll come yeah. in and they'll wait with me, and then when it comes out, I'll read it live together, and uh, it's it's fun because. You get like the unfiltered reaction of, mm -hmm. you know, like somebody like uh, our good friend Astacross, who like you watch his video on YouTube yeah. later going over the TWAB and it's very polished. He, he's got his thoughts all organized and all that stuff. But <laughs> me, I'm just reading it raw. And uh, finally, they get to the part about the Lorentz driver. And I'm like, oh, beautiful. Like, oh, perfect. Love to see that here. And I read the change. And it's like, yeah, we're going to change. What did they even say? It was like, we're going to change the, the part where you get ability energy from it. Yeah, they've removed the ability energy regeneration when you pick up the little telemetry thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and that was it. And then they moved on to the next weapon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, question what, mark? What? <laughs> <It was like, laughs> out of all the complaints you've ever heard about the Lorenz driver, was one of them focused on the ability energy part of that gun not even and a little <laughs> i've never heard one person complain about that part i uh, just it just yeah weird I, I i've heard like it's like arbalist on crack like it it yeah. sucks it sucks people in to the, <laughs> the the death zone from like you could be like 10 yards away it'll suck you in yep. and uh yeah just most free Aim assist, aim collat weapon. I don't know. That was, I was shocked by that, and then I was shocked about the part about uh, DMT, the Dead Man's Tale. Yeah, because they, they put DMT. I was like, okay, what are they going to do here? Because they they already nerfed that weapon one time, mm -hmm. and they were like, well, we want to make sure the weapon feels good on controller. And I thought, okay, that's a really I, an admirable goal yeah. by Bungie because we know if you're if you listen to people talk about it in the community, there's some weapons that feel great on controller, bad on M and K. Some weapons that feel great on M and K, bad on controller. And uh, DMT feeling great on M and K, bad on controller. I just kind of thought that that's like the way that things were. Like it was just kind of a right. just the nature of the beast or whatever. And uh, no, they're going to try and change it. 
And even though in the TWAB it was like, well, these changes are mainly for controller, but they will have a little bit of an effect on M and K too. And I'm like, great, yeah. I are I already hate it. Like, even if we're buffing DMT by like five percent mm -hmm. on M and K, I'm like, I'm I'm kind of out, dude. Like, I I I've been killed by that weapon enough. And don't get me wrong, I I use it. It's really fun to play with on M and K. Maybe the most fun. MK weapon in the game yeah. but like but it's really strong <laughs> on pc <laughs> really oppressive uh you can just totally smoke people from across the map so i i worry right. that even though that they're doing a buff to make it feel better on controller i'm worried that part of the even though it's like they're like yeah it'll be minimally affected on mnk i'm still worried that it'll be made just a little bit better because i i already find it relatively annoying right now yeah and you yeah. know anytime they start talking about uh lessening i think they, they, they're they lessening the recoil a bit and like improving the accuracy yeah. something like that yeah On last word 2.0 <laughs> it's like uh, we got to see what, what it does. i mean <laughs> yeah you're right i, I, I do worry about that yeah, it, it, you're right, though, that it's admirable that they're looking to make this a, a, a yeah. better feeling weapon on controller because it feels amazing with mouse and keyboard. One of the one of the more fun guns to use, but they had to be real careful about uh, about dragging us right back to the area we were before where, again, this literal long range last word 2.0 was yeah. just oppressively dominating the battlefield and uh, <laughs> they, that along with the Lorenz driver change it was just. One of the ones that kind of stuck out to me is being, hmm, hmm, I'm gonna be, gonna be holding, uh, holding on to that one to see what exactly they. What did you yeah. mean by this, Bungie? <laughs> yeah. I'm, but you know, I'm excited to see my ex-wife Darcy come back a little bit. <laughs> oh, you know. Darcy. man! No story has ever ended well that started with you know. I'm excited to see. My I'm ex excited to see my ex-wife. <laughs> Look. She's got reduced flinch, recoil, and accuracy <laughs> degradation by 50%, while personal sure. assistant is active. I've always loved her personal yeah. assistant. And now it has a one second delay before deactivating when off target and increases yeah. the damage by in PVE by 20%. What's not That's to nice. love? Still a heavy weapon though, right? I think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, unless that, because it is getting that 20% damage buff, mm -hmm. unless that's going to be like enough to make it compete with heavies. And even then, we're going to have Whisper back in the player pool, which I yeah. uh, don't know if that's going to be back in, in the King DPS slot. I don't think it will be. It's going to be better than it was. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't understand the reasoning for why Darcy is still a heavy weapon. That's one of the, that's an odd thing to me. Yeah, I've heard people mention that as well. It's, it's a weird situation because if you if you move it if you keep it in the power slot, then yeah, unless you give it a pretty noticeable buff, it's going to be outperformed by like a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, but if you move it to special, then it might become a little bit ridiculous to the point. Where, yeah, like where I wouldn't even think about caring about a god roll legendary because I'm like, yeah, whatever. I got the Darcy, but yeah, Darcy. it's a really weird place that it's in i hope that the buff can make it somewhat viable i mm -hmm. personally i i was fine with never needing to use that gun outside of being a of <laughs> like no, just being a private lobby measuring stick <laughs> yeah right like, stuff i'm like yeah it's like oh how good how good is the range on this hand cannon yeah how far away are you i don't know get, get out the darcy like yeah. that's what i used it for <laughs> i'm fine with that it's a dev tool. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a measuring stick. Three meters. With a, with a, with a trigger. Three meters. <laughs> yeah, it's literally that. And it's like, yeah, if, if they make it viable, sh great. Okay, whatever. All right. Yeah. Look, man. I mean, I'm happy to see some kind of change for it. It's kind of been one of yeah. those exotics that have been left behind, uh, you know, mm -hmm. back in year one, year two of Destiny. So yeah, it'd be nice to see something there. I saw her name something... pop up and I was just like, cool. I'm going cool. Cool. Very cool. Take it. Enjoy the ex-wife. I'm sure it'll go well for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> something that I was kind of surprised about, I guess I'd say happily surprised, is Vex Mythoclast. We knew that gun was hot. It's We knew it was a little too useful in all levels of content, whether it's PvE or PvP. 
It's a solid weapon all around. I am, for one, I'm kind of happy to see that Bungie kind of took a, re a restrained approach when it comes to addressing Vex. Rather than destroying its damage in PvE, destroying the damage buff it gives itself with its catalyst, they're just knocking down the aim assist and the, uh, the number of kills it requires to get to overcharge. How do you guys feel about that change? I thought it was pretty even-handed. Yeah, I think it's a good way to kind of like keep, kind of reel the weapon in a little bit. Because like, right. while it is strong in sixes, um, getting that linear activated, that's very generous. It's like Queen Breaker, uh, OG Queen, Queen Breaker yeah. generous with the, yeah. uh, with the aim assist without totally, you know, making the weapon disappear. Cause I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think, I feel like the usage in sixes of Vex has kind of like gone down a little bit ever since like mm. it came out and you know, it got, yeah. it got buffed. Well, that's because it's a solid performing weapon in PvE and PvP, but there are other things that, you know, in a are specialized better. form act better. You know, yeah. It's just, it's just a really good all-around sort of gun. Like, if you're the person out there who doesn't want to make a specialized build, grab a Vex Method mm -hmm. Blast. You can go run anything in the game. It gets particle deconstruction, so it's, it's, it's perfectly fine in PvE, and uh, it's a solid performing PvP weapon as well. That's the thing, too. I mean, like, right now, it feels like it's just kind of like season of the Vex because yeah. of Particle de Deconstruction. Because I'm right. sure once that mod goes out of the rotation, you know, all right, <laughs> off to the vault you go. <laughs> it's yeah, been real. Much. Yeah. Which is uh, one of the reasons why I'm glad they didn't knock down the damage on it at all. Because I think right. a lot of that mm -hmm. is being tied to Particle. And uh, yeah. that goes yeah. away after this season. Anyone here play exclusively on console? Anyone... I Here. play on my PlayStation 5. That's pretty much Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Do you see a lot of mytho in Control? The times that I do play Control, I see at least one person has it, okay. I want to say, like every game. Okay. But I don't feel like it's... I don't feel like it's it's an issue, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fair. I I wonder because I always wonder if uh, if it's not if I don't see it very often. Like, what if if tomorrow morning you woke up, everybody in the game, you had a fresh mytho sitting in the postmaster, right? Like, would then the PvP game types be overrun? Because I'm wondering, like, are people not using it as much because it's difficult to acquire and not a lot of people out there raid? Or is it like, eh, maybe it's not as good as people thought? Because uh, I know when it came out, like, or when it got freshly buffed, a lot of people, I know Drew is still a really big fan of that gun. He doesn't use it all the time, but he uses it a lot. And it's very strong at mid-range. So I just I just wonder yeah. out loud, like, if it's... Because um, I do think it's really strong on paper. I, mm -hmm. uh, But it's not, it's not... I wouldn't call it a problem, but I, I do wonder if it's because... Maybe not a lot of people have it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, there's got to be a way f for us to check that, too, um, to see, like, what percentage of the population yeah. has it. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder. I'm trying to think. I would definitely think that's, that's, a, that's a part of it, it being tied yeah. to a raid. That, mm -hmm. that definitely would be a part of, of the usage numbers, high or low, that are on it. And uh, it did have that new weapon shine, you know, after it got buffed. That, that first week or two of trials, I saw a lot of Vex Mythic class when I was uh, when I was playing through that. Yeah, and it's been progressively less ever since. So you're, I think you're definitely onto something, Fallout. Yeah, maybe. So the numbers of okay, I'm I'm looking at Braid Tech right now, and so this isn't the number of people who have Vex Mythic class, but this is the number of pe uh, the percentage of players who are indexed by Velispa who've completed the record for the Vex Mythoclast Catalyst is 13.85. Wow. So less than 15% of the population. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, that might be it. That might be hmm. why you don't see it everywhere. <laughs> no, well, not everybody has one. Well, and with that, it's like more people could have it. It's just the Catalyst. Like, yeah, it's not that yeah. big of a pain in the ass, but, but it's just like, Kind of okay. A pain. <laughs> All right, we'll do a Vex Catalyst run. <laughs> right, right. Fine. Does everybody yeah. here have Vex? I don't. Then what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you here? Get out of here. Yeah. I, I, so, I mean, that might be the answer there. Who knows? 
My question is, uh, does giving a buff to dual mode receiver make Soros as a 360 auto any better? I don't think so. <laughs> it's 360s. I don't like. I'm not a fan of yeah. them. I think they suck. It, 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 I'm really interested to see how well it'll feel over range. Yeah. Because like, if it has enough range to compete with Real, like the really long 140s, borderline 120s, right? Like, right. I don't know, maybe. Because, like, okay, I always talk about how the two things that make a gun popular in PvP it's like, one, how good is, how deadly is the ceiling potential on the weapon? So, think about a weapon like No Land Beyond in D1. Yeah. Ceiling potential on No Land, really high, right? Uh, just especially when they. Didn't No Land have the ability to just you could get ammo with it? Like you didn't have to worry about like am I remembering? I, it's so hard to remember the the D one ammo economy. You know what I mean? I think, yeah, I think you could because that was the reason. Well, was one of the reasons why everybody was using it. It was, it was a, like a infinite ammo insta kill weapon, right? Yeah, something like that. And um and then so that's factor one. And the factor two is like how easy is the weapon to use? Ease of use, yeah. Yeah. So if it's really difficult to use, then even if it's really good on paper not a lot of people are going to use it but if you have both that are like you know one or the other could push a weapon to being used a lot so if the extra 30 range and the zoom makes it like really easy to like cross map people then maybe people will start using it because it it may it'll just be it, it doesn't take any like full auto weapons are much easier. You just hold the trigger down and like you yeah. just kind of like lot. You don't have to time anything. There's no pacing like a hand cannon. So it it could be. I I don't know how much it's going to be used with the thirty range. It could feel great, or it could just be like, eh, it's the same. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the but plus thirty to range. I think is a really interesting change there. Plus the zoom. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, a kind of a a fully automatic scout rifle at that point. That hits <laughs> it could a little be, bit yeah. harder. Which. Kind of brings me to something else that was mentioned in the TWAB mm -hmm. with the quality of life change we're going to be getting post Witch Queen. Yeah. We're going to get a full auto trigger yeah. for all semi automatic weapons. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I feel good about it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's, um, there are some weapons that when I'm trying to farm for them, I will only look for a roll that has full auto. Mm -hmm. It's rare. Yep. It's definitely rare. Uh, usually the weapons that require a lot of trigger mashing mm -hmm. uh, are yeah. will fall under that category. So a really good one is like the Darkest Before. If you have oh, a full yeah. auto Darkest Before mm -hmm. at, at mid-range, it feels really good. Like yeah. all you do is just pull the trigger down, you strafe, lock on their head, and yeah, they're, they're gone. And yeah, it's like the gun would be better in theory if you had a different perk in column four and you were just good at matching the pacing if you were just optimal with how quickly you do it but you can get tripped up with weapons that yep. require a lot of mashing so the ability to just have that mm -hmm. automatically that's like crazy to me uh it's, it seems yeah. really good i like the idea of it being a trade-off too i i get it for accessibility purposes because i i mm -hmm. think that that's that's probably like the main reason why they're doing this for, sure. for accessibility rather than having it be some sort of toggle in settings or whatever. Um, I actually like that there's a trade-off to it so that folks have to decide, okay, do I want like boss spec on this or do I want full auto like for that play style, if that makes sense. No, yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting, uh, interesting quality of life change all around that um i think a lot of people have been and asking for that sort of thing especially when it comes to certain sidearms and scout rifles so good stuff good stuff mm -hmm. um i almost wonder if it's going to be i know of a few other games that do that sort of thing basically allow you to toggle a full auto mode for semi-automatic weapons but the trade-off is that it won't fire as fast as it potentially could if mm. you were pulling the trigger i wonder if that's going to be something yeah. that bungie does here they xenophage it they xenophage it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, well, who knows? Yeah. Man, you look like you're falling asleep there, buddy. No, yeah, just listening. <laughs> I don't know. It's, the, ang it's the angle of the camera. 
<laughs> the yeah, camera we, angle. We forgot to get him at an Instagram <laughs> angle before we, uh, before we went live. But like for you, Nim, I was um, you know, your baby's getting a buff, right? Yeah, Mal- Malfi. Mm-hmm. I know. I did. I did oh, see that. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. I don't know. I mean, like, I'm excited. It's getting some attention, right? But just catalyst, not one, enough, please. <laughs> catalyst. Yeah, yeah, it needs a catalyst. Yeah. yeah. And like, while they're dishing those out, Thorn catalyst, please. I'm actually oh my god! There hasn't been one for Thorn already because I mean yeah. Lumina has one. I figured that would have come along with uh, with it. Um, Dude, I would be so happy with the Thorn catalyst. I've been mm-hmm. I've been using that gun. I used that gun all the other day mm-hmm. while playing Trials. It's just still a fun gun. Still as fun as it ever was, man. Still it's, fun. Um, if it performs better on MNK than it does in controller, I believe. Do you, you know, you know something interesting. Okay, so for the past year, every time I've put on Thorn, every time I've tried to use Thorn with controller, I'm like, ugh, it's bad. I don't like it. And then I I whip out MNK and I'm like, yeah, that's how you use Thorn right there. Yeah, this is, it's like MNK gun. Yeah. But then um, I was trying to talk to a couple people about maybe customizing my controller settings a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I talked to a couple people. I talked to my own Twitch chat about what their preferences are. And I started tinkering around a little bit. And I, funny story, I, after I, I did a, a lot of experimenting and then I landed on one setting that I thought felt pretty good. And then I went to go talk to my boy Drew, controller main extraordinaire, and was like, hey, I'm tinkering around. I landed on this, but just to double check, what do you use? Because like, I want to try different things from different people. Right. And it turns out that Drew used the exact same thing that I ended up landing on through oh. experimentation. Yeah. And uh, when I watched Drew, it's so funny when you watch a player who is really good with like a weapon that you're struggling with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. when Drew puts on Thorn, he's very good with it. Very good with right. Thorn. Yeah. And, and which is funny because like that whole year when I tried Thorn on controller, it just didn't work for me. But then when I had that new look sensitivity that I experimented with and I put Thorn on, felt great. And really? I, I, I played with Thorn controller all weekend on zone trials and I lapped people. Badly. So wait, is it a controller sensitivity thing? Mm-hmm. Or what? Yep. It's because um, like I play on now. Yeah. 14, I want to say. Okay. And what about ADS multiplier? I, mean, I don't know if I've ever touched that. That is the that's the deciding factor. Really? And I had I had I had, I had really? never yeah I had never touched ADS multiplier before because I was always like I've been fine. <laughs> I've gone flawless like a hundred times. I've sherped people flawless. You know mm-hmm, if it ain't yeah. broke don't if it ain't broke don't fix it. Mm-hmm. But when we got really deep into the conversation of what felt better and yada yada and like I realized that a lot of the people who I talked to who are pretty good at PvP. To some degree, they all have some change. Most of them do on the ADS multiplier. So I tried it out, and I think for me, that was the deciding factor. So I, what I landed on, yeah, what I landed on was nine sensitivity, which to a lot of people is, is quite low. But I was, <laughs> but I was coming up from seven, which is mm-hmm. I I know very very low. Yeah. But like all the way again, I, I kept it the same all the way through like D1. I was always on seven, which which in D1 was like normal or yeah, maybe speed. on the high. Yeah. Or maybe on the highish end, depending on who you talk to. If in D1 you talk to somebody who was 10, you were like, oh, you crazy. <laughs> but, uh, right uh, so, yeah. I'm like so I'm really certain I played 10 in D1 because I mean, I, I was did. 10 in D2. Mm-hmm. Oh, you and were? Uh, when, uh, yeah, I, yeah. And then like when the... Um, when they got rid of the traction mod, mm-hmm. I went up higher to to fourteen. What I FOV are you on? One hundred and five FOV. One hundred and five. Yeah. Yeah. So I I went up to nine, and then I took the ADS multiplier down to point eight. So if you don't know what that means, if you're listening at home, uh, the regular sensitivity is how quickly and smoothly you look around, and then when you your ADS multiplier is if you ADS the weapon. And then continue to move and look around. How quickly is it? So if I had, if you had an ADS multiplier of like 0.1, it would be really slow. But only when you're uh-huh. ADSing and scoping with your weapon. And then when you descope, you move around like normal. So I took it down to, I went to nine and 0.8, and 
for ADS. And uh, that was just me goofing around with, you know, like, oh, I'll raise this, I'll lower that, you know, just tinker around. And then it turned out to be that's what Drew was using. And it felt good. It felt really? really, really good. Yeah, I was um, also, <laughs> this is uh, something strange. I changed my FOV. Mm. Uh, for the longest time, I had it at 85. Because when, uh, like only a couple of months ago, it hasn't been too long. But a while That's ago, console FOV, I think. Con no, console seventy two. Seventy two. Uh, yeah. yeah, seventy two. And I, when I wanted to play Trials, but it, the, you guys remember when the cheating on PC was so bad? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. bad, Dark dude. Ages. Every weekend, people were like, "Dude, I like, why are we even playing Trials? Like, you'd go in, people flying around the air with like unlimited rocket launcher yeah. ammo. They're like <laughs> shooting people through walls. It's like this game is trash." So PC trials was like unplayable uh -huh. and uh, I didn't want to go back to 72 <laughs> console. <laughs> uh, and this was before like, you know, the new consoles were really difficult to get or they weren't out yet. Can't remember. Yeah. But um, so my friend jokingly was like, we should try Stadia. And uh, just as a joke, I was like, that might be funny for a YouTube video. I'm like, oh, I've played on Stadia or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I downloaded Stadia and I played. And it was great because I have a sick internet connection. Like, my internet connection is really strong. Uh, there's like a, like a hair of like input delay. But after you played it for like an hour, like mm, I didn't yeah. even notice. I didn't even notice it anymore. Kind of feels like you're and, running through mud. A little bit for the first hour it mm -hmm. felt strange but then you got used to it and um me and a bunch of other people were playing on stadia because there's guaranteed because you're playing on google's server like you're playing on yeah. their cloud right. so like you can't you can't like you can't hack it or whatever so we were playing on stadia and they were like the best there's it was guaranteed cheat free trials and yep. i i uh i got cool guy who played with me a bunch. Uh, the person who really got into Sadia for a long time was Cammy, because Cammy was so frustrated with getting yeah. the cheating people on PC. We just couldn't stand it. So we went on Stadia, and Cammy was like, I'm blown away by how good this is. But we couldn't figure out the FOV, because you, you can't change it, because this is one mm -hmm. of the downsides of Stadia. It's like, they're just like, no, you're going to play on whatever we tell you. So I went into a private lobby for like an hour, and I, I took screenshots at every fov I, I, I went to a corner and i looked at like one angle i just took all these pictures <laughs> and i kept changing it was like something out of like csi i'm literally like locking up all these pictures side by side i'm like hmm, that one looks pretty close Man. and it's yeah tldr <laughs> i figured out you're so iterative <laughs> i yeah it's just crazy and i was like what are you doing I'm like don't worry about it don't uh, worry I figured out it was Better. 85 fov for stadia so because I was playing so much trials and like for the rest of the week, you play control, you play, you know, PVE, all that stuff. Of course, yeah. I'm going to do it on Steam because the performance is better by just a little bit, which is like the deciding factor. But then Stadia it, trials comes around. I'm going over Stadia so I don't get cheated on. So I had all my yeah. my FOV at 85 across the board and people would come into Twitch chat and be like, why is your FOV so weird? It's like because it's on 85. <laughs> They're like, you know, you can change it to like max right no like, i yeah. did this to no, myself I I, i'm like I, this is the thing that i'm doing to myself don't worry because i didn't want i didn't want to i didn't want to conflict uh muscle memory right you know so I chose um, this life i chose i chose the stadium life and then now we have great anti-cheat bungie finally came out with a good anti-cheat so i don't have to do it anymore so i've abandoned stadia <sighs> but uh, it was a good run but now i'm at 103 mm. fov 103 mm -hmm. And some people are like, oh, he must have figured out some kind of like, is that some kind of magic combo like that like is better than 105? Why is it better, Fawn? It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I asked multiple content creators back when we had the ability, when we first got the ability to like FOV slide and all that stuff. And I was like, what do you play on? And for the most part, it was either 100 or 105, mm -hmm, except, right. for, except for Frostbolt. Frostbolt, and I can't remember if it was either 103 or 102. He's on one of those two FOVs. And I was like, why do you do that? Because expecting some very wise technical answer. <laughs> he just goes, I just wanted to be different. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I was like, 
Right. So he's, he's like the best PvP player ever. Yep. So I'm gonna yep. do 103 <laughs> <to be> like <laughs> Frostbolt. So I do I do 103 FOV. I do nine controller sensitivity with 0.8 ADS. And Thorn has never felt better for me ever. It feels great. Did you guys hear that and that <laughs> anecdote? Shot. This man went from explaining stuff like the 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 specifics of how you can get a hand cannon to feel better on controller to talking yeah. about the experience of FOV on Stadia. That's, That's why you go to Fallout Place for literally <laughs> what you just got for the last five minutes. By the way, please make a video about that Thorn thing. I, oh yeah, a, for real, Thorn guy. That would be amazing because uh, I I had no idea that those scalers yeah. would make such a difference. Totally. I had, legitimately had no clue mm -hmm. like you know i i've bumped Try around with sensitivity and all that but i but the ads scalers i hadn't touched that yeah and I there's been, more so what exactly here. does mm -hmm. the ads scaling do it just makes it when you're adsing your weapon and looking around it's like slower mm -hmm. and stickier um, and because re remember the controller has two types of mm -hmm. aim assist whereas m and k only has one type of aim assist controller has that yep. reticle friction so mm -hmm. if you're passing a reticle over a player It'll be like, oh, it like wants to stick on them as sticky. you go by. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So when you slow down, when you lower your ADS multiplier a little bit slower when you're aiming, but that's fine because normally when you're at mid range combat, whatever, and you're aiming a hand cannon at somebody, they're probably strafing back and forth and shooting at you yep. too. So I found that like you don't really need to have insane look sensitivity, sensitivity when you're yeah. ADSing, depending on how you play. So I tried it out and yeah, it feels really good. And as as you explain that, shot. it mm -hmm. makes perfect sense to me. And 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 for the layperson out there, you ever in PVE, you're aiming at a witch, and like a thrall goes walking past in the background, <laughs> and your gun goes like pulling on them. Yeah, that's kind of what Fallout's yeah. talking about here with yes. the ADS scaling. It's that slow pull when you're ADSing and moving around. That's ba the game basically telling you, hey, let, let me stop you, baby bird. Let me put you. On. <laughs> this is your target. Slow down right there. So yeah. changing that that makes so much sense, and I can't believe I I, I legitimately had no idea that that was even an option that you could change in the game. So that's going to be something I try yeah. out the next time I play. Mm -hmm. Look into it, for sure. Yeah, Make a guide. Please. <laughs> make a guide that's incredible news. All right. Before, yeah. I guess, we, we, we move things on to the end of the show and get into audience questions, we talked a little bit about it, but there's no way we could get out of here without getting your feelings on the current state of Trials of Osiris. Oh, okay. We've sure. had a bunch of iterative changes over the last few weeks or the last month or two. <laughs> I think we had we had the return of what was it, Control Zone? Is that what they call it? Mm -hmm. In in Trials this weekend. How do you feel about the current state of Trials? What uh, where, where do you feel the mode is going? Oh man, it uh it it goes week to week. It goes week <laughs> to week. By the way, I thought you were gonna. I thought you, you when you were leading the build up to that question, I thought you were gonna ask me about shotguns. I, I mean, was like, let's go about shotguns real quick. No, it's too late. Too late. Oh, you already you put that barrel <laughs> back in the bottle. I was like, I was about to be like, this mother. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I hear we're getting a new ornament for bell winners. It's got a three times the barrel. <laughs> oh my god! What does this mean, Paul? Triple barrel length. It rotates. Uh, no. Every time. <laughs> so so my my feeling on trials will will depend week to week because Bungie's doing so much experimenting, dude. Mm -hmm. Every week, it's like. When we're reading the TWAB, it's like, damn, dude, like, I, I, what are they going to do this week? It's like, hey, this yeah. week in trials. Yeah, we're putting, you know, rabid wolves all over the map. Like, just avoid them or whatever. It's like, what the hell's going on? Like, they're changing. <laughs> it changes so much week to week. And uh, I've had weeks that I really did like and weeks that I really did not like. And w out of everything I've argued about, I try to I try to not get into Twitter arguments, dude. Oh my god, D one Fallout was was really bad. I would would get into Twitter arguments, especially with the with the Crucible Radio Boys. They were they were mm. very they were very passionate, and they were very uh, they hated toxicity, mm. and uh, they would, but ironically, they would get into all these Twitter brouhaha's yeah. with, and it's like yep. there's sometimes I have to. It's like I agree that they're trying to come from a, a position of rationality but it's like at some point you have to be like you're literally arguing with a 14 year old yeah. like like this, this guy's got an anime profile picture like he's he's 100 percent 15 like he's just it's 
it's not worth it, Bones. There's Move no on. end to it. He's got There's a very no troubling end. hashtag like in his bio. Go. You should stop. <laughs> yeah, just look at his bio. He's, he's weird. It's like just it's, it's not this argument. The juice is not worth the squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> but out of everything that we've argued about um, on Twitter lately or on the podcast or the feedback we've gotten about things we talked about on the podcast, it's all been about trials. People are yeah. really, really opinionated because um, it was kind of that week one, week two split where the week one trials revamp everybody was like oh my god this is amazing and they had the card-based matchmaking and stuff like that and then like right. i think we got into like week two week three they were like well, we're gonna change it up to make it much more better for the the lower end of the pvp player uh, player base and then the higher end of the pvp player base all complained that they hated it and blah 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 and the the lower skilled players quote unquote really enjoyed it so but everybody argued their point. I didn't have one person on the high end of PvP being like, yeah, I really liked the the week three matchmaking or whatever. And it was the same thing the other way. The the lower casual players were all like, oh, you know, I, I love that week three. Hated the week one. Everybody, everybody argued on their side of the fence. Yep. And uh, it was it was really heated. But I kind of how many times have I mentioned Drewski on this goddamn podcast? Several. Like third time. We love him. Several. He's a, he's, he's a great guy. But um, yeah. we, <laughs> we, were, we were on our podcast, and he finally got to a point. He was like, you know what? I don't care anymore. He's like, whatever whatever Bungie does that is the best for the game, like whatever gets the most people playing, whatever gets the most player-based numbers weekend to weekend, don't care what it is. That's what I want. If it means that... I, as a higher-end PvP player, have to take an L and deal with more rough matchmaking for me, but it means that the player base numbers are stronger overall. Don't care. That's what I want, because I'm tired right. of the arguing. I'm tired of the back and forth. Yada. So I, I kind of, on the matchmaking side, I'm with Drew on that. I don't care anymore. It's whatever is best for the player base numbers, I will do. Uh, for the mode of the game, did you guys play a bunch of Trials? Today, yesterday, this weekend? I, I haven't played no. this weekend. This this weekend, the changes that they they talked about making mm -hmm. seemed more interesting to me than the first time that they did the um, uh, yeah. capture zone trials. And I've been seeing some good feedback from players like Ill Physics, um, mm. who was talking about how he liked how it pushed you to actually engage with the map and try different yeah. engagements rather right. than wait it out. Um, which yeah. is super nice, or it sounds I, super nice. Yeah, I um, I will say that out of every experimental weekend we've had, this might be one of my highest ranked weekends. It's definitely within the top three, without mm -hmm. question. It's been so good. The first time we had zone trials on Wormhaven, right? Uh, didn't like it because everybody. Uh, you got super energy for capping the point, and the yeah. uh, it was crazy. So like everybody would just bubble down, and the map didn't yeah. really play as well. And like the territory would go to the other end of the map if mm -hmm. you won the round or whatever. And it's like, yeah. come on, man, that's so, like you're giving them free setup. By the time I get there, I have to scramble to make a play, and uh, it just it didn't feel good. But this weekend they're doing the rotating neutral mm -hmm. cap point, so it's always in the middle of the map. Uh, you don't get super energy from capping the territory. It's a much better map overall. Uh, they changed the matchmaking back from what it was like a week ago, which apparently everybody hated. <laughs> and uh, all of those things together have been really, really enjoyable because I hate... One thing I hate about Trials is when people play very turtly, very campy, uh, right. They're intentionally avoiding combat. They're trying to yeah. play super. It plays back to the season 14 or whatever it was meta mm -hmm. where people were just camping Geomag Chaos Reach yep. and like just the worst, right? It's just like they're holding back and they're playing up their super meter. But you can't do that now because if you hold back, try to charge your roaming super, we're just going to capture the point, point. and it's going to be over. And there are some downsides to it. I was playing with a, a good friend of mine named Time and... Uh, he doesn't like the fact that there are less, quote, hero moments, because if you're in a 1v3, and like old trials, you're in a 1v3, okay, take your time. You still have to worry about the round ending eventually. Yeah. Right. But you can take your time, and you can make a play. You want to get people alone. You're moving around the map a lot. It's a lot of interesting movement to try and pull off the 1v3. But we played together the other day, 
and he's trying to pull off a 1v3. Not intentionally, he was just in that situation. But he's dancing with one guy by B. Meanwhile, the other team is capturing the zone yep. in Shrine, and he's like raging because like he has no time to do both. Mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah, I get that that will discourage a little bit more of the quote hero moments, but there still are plenty of other hero moments in, yeah. in Trials. Still plenty. So I I would rather if if this maybe if we had more maps that were totally neutral mm -hmm. where where the zone could go back and forth because it wouldn't work on every map. No. But because, if we had more maps, yeah, because they're not symmetrical yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So if we had more like that, I would be fine with this being Trials literally every weekend. I'd be yeah. totally fine with it. Every no, now I, and then freelance because that was fun too. Yeah. You know, an idea that Dan brought up, um, I think someone in the chat had talked about it in previous weeks, was that, you know, you can keep freelance around, but make it like a once a month thing. It's so like Tywin one week, yeah. one weekend, Tywin yeah. a month, yeah, Tywin. Do, do the freelance playlist so the people who uh, are looking forward to that have a week that they can go and and then run freelance. But um, I'm all, I'm, I'm right there with you with when it comes to Capture Zone. I think... Um, the changes that they made were definitely necessary. Giving an advantageous spawn for the capture point to the losing team of, of a round, I think, was way too much, plus the no super sense. energy and all of that. It, yeah, yeah it, it was it was kind of crazy. But having this, it kind of creates a more kinetic environment because it's forcing people to move around. Like you said, you cannot turtle in capture zone because if you decide to turtle back and, uh, and then throw up those defenses, well, they're just going to go and take the zone. So you're forced to kind of get into an active encounter rather than playing super passively. And that's honestly when I think Destiny PvP is at its best, when people are going into active encounters and it's a crazy kinetic experience. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you there, man. I think, uh, I think Capture Zone has got, it's definitely got some benefits there for Trials. Bungie's done a good agree, job. Yeah. I think they've, they've yeah. done a good job iterating yeah. on the game mode and, and they're clearly trying a bunch of new things to not just invite a much wider audience into the game mode. They've done that. Yeah. But keep it fresh to play uh, <laughs> moving forward. And that's, you know, there, there's there's nothing wrong with that at all. I just wonder what it all looks like when it settles. Like when we're kind of out yeah. of this experimental phase. Yeah, right. What's Trials going to be in a year? Yeah, yeah. What is it? well, what is it going to be in six months? Like, yeah. we've got a few months leading up to Witch Queen, like almost three, like or I think it's like 103 days at the time of this recording that mm -hmm. we have until Witch Queen drops. What's it going to look like when Witch Queen pops up? Like, yeah, is it going to be? Are they going to be done experimenting? <laughs> like, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. We'll have Trials Labs number thirty-seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> number nine. Who knows, man? Um, <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? I I don't know. I, this season has has intrigued me more about Trials. I, I've I've had a lot more fun diving in there just randomly. Um, when before I just wouldn't have thought of it. So I've, I've right. got some time off for the next few weeks. <laughs> so I think I might hang in there like over the yeah. next couple of days, just see what I can do, uh, in the playlist. Cause it looks really the, from everybody's talking about it. It sounds like there's a very positive experience among the community, not just like the few people that I trust. Right. So yeah, very excited. No, it's, it's good stuff, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how Bungie continues to fine-tune the mode and uh, make it the trials that they're dreaming of it being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that's the, the nicest way to put that. Yeah. But all right, was there any other news we needed to cover, Dan, or can we move on into audience questions? You know what? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I could, be, I could be wrong, unless you guys want to talk about the Threads of Light thing, which I really don't care about talking about the Threads of Light thing. <laughs> Look, <laughs> people make interesting designs in this game. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we don't design shame here. We're good. And there you go. <laughs> good take. Well, <laughs> well, maybe a little design shame. It depends shame, on what you're talking about. <laughs> I've seen some questionable looking guardians out there. Look, man. <laughs> If you look like you just shoved the crayon box in your mouth, okay. <laughs> it's it, that's your that's thing. Funny. It's not my, it's not necessarily my taste. That's your taste. You have at it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Oh man. Right. Also, Eck, thank you so much for the host. Um, let's see here. We have several questions. 
Oh boy. For for tonight. Let's uh let's see what we can get into. Um so Tywin asks with the catalyst mentioned in the TWAB and the their design them not wanting to design towards just producing orbs. Um what are some improvements and extra perks or a unique addition to a weapon that you would like Bungie to revisit in the catalysts in the future, since they are going to be changing them up. Wait, Ooh. say that again. What, uh, so the way that they wrote the question, I'm having to then translate. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, I get that a same. lot too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so um, since they mentioned in the TWAB that catalysts are going to be like changed to not just be orb makers, right? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, right improvements to the catalysts or what extra perks would you like to see added to catalysts for certain weapons? Like which weapons would you like to see uh, extra perks be added to the catalyst have, or redone? That's very interesting. I, uh, I don't know. I think it would be custom tailored to the weapon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would have to think about like each individual weapon. Uh, I know the weapons that I've had people tell me the most that they wish there were a catalyst for. Mm -hmm. uh you know like thorn the monarch and chaperone i think are the most i've heard people wanting there to be absolutely something yeah something unique but uh, it, it would be tricky because you have to do it in a way that won't totally break the gun i've heard a lot of people right. talking about wanting to put icarus on chaperone which is the craziest thing i've ever <laughs> don't why do, would you do that yeah don't do that like that's like oh no chaperone is crazy it's already it doesn't, nuts it doesn't need that help i don't know yeah it's an interesting question i wish i could answer it more detailedly but i think it would probably depend on the gun yeah because i mean cause the, you know there are some catalysts that basically just give a gun more ammunition or something like that or like uh i think one of the more lack or lackluster ones is probably vigilance wing i think uh, that catalyst just makes it what full auto yeah. vig wing one yeah it makes it yeah. full auto yeah it, it, so it doesn't it didn't, doesn't change the rate of fire or anything like that. Nope. It just makes it so you don't have to keep tapping the trigger. <laughs> um, yep. That's that's probably one that could that could stand a little bit of a revamp. Um, some other lackluster ones are prospector. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that one does. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't it just give what it does more it do? ammo? So it needs rework. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, does does the prospector catalyst just give it more ammo? I think so. Like how no many idea. people out there? The, yeah, Chat. nobody here. I don't have it no in my vault, knows. so I can't tell. No. Chat. How many be real? Be look look at me. Look at me. Be <laughs> be real, y'all. How many of y'all remember prospector was a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the five people out there who remembered prospector exists. <laughs> but you know like like Legend of Acreus, I think just uh, gives it extra ammo. Which you know that was special back in year one of oh, uh, of, mm. of of Destiny two because that was a ludicrously powerful weapon. Not so much anymore. So that's one that I think could use uh, could be revisited maybe. But I have no idea what they would do to it though. Like, is there there are some catalysts that are like that, a little bit lackluster that give just a little bit of ammunition or something like that. And then you have catalysts like the Trinity Ghoul catalyst, which takes it and turns it into an absolute monstrosity in terms of ad clear and PVE. You've got catalysts like the Vex Mythoclass catalyst, which you know gives it a nice little damage and stability buff and all that kind of stuff. I, I do wish more of the catalysts were kind of like that, in that they took the sort of theme of a weapon like with Trinity Ghoul mm -hmm. and then expanded upon it. And yeah. uh, hopefully that's what Bungie's going to be doing. But like, if I were to pick one off the top of my head, I'd have, I had no idea <laughs> which ones are the most lackluster. It's something that just, like you said, it's something that just elevates the weapon and you know into it, it's into itself. You know. Yeah. I like, think, like, it, I, go on. I I think I know exactly what you mean. So let's let's say Prospector, okay? Nobody knows yeah. what it does anyway. Nobody cares, right? <laughs> it was the anti-ribbon gun. It Nobody... was the delete ribbon. Exactly. So. Yeah. Here's my pitch. Cool. We have Prospector. Instead of shooting one grenade, it shoots three. No. <laughs> and they bounce once, and they're spike grenades. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Damn. Yeah, I oh, think no. that would be pretty great. Because, I mean, like, the way the gun works currently is that it just shoots the grenades. You have to hold down the trigger. It's full auto, in order, yeah. If, yeah, in order to get the, the grenades to stick, and then when you release it, they detonate. 
But right. just like imagine if what like Dan said, we just shoot the three grenades at once just, and you just leave them there. Bouncing grenades. Yeah. <laughs> That that spawn uh, the the swarms. Oh my goodness, that'd be. I want it. Give it to me. <laughs> that would make the weapon super fun. Just like make it like a, a mine grenade launcher. Or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's I called that. the prospector. Make it drill. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> exactly. <Interesting laughs> enough. Hold on, Aura in chat. Aura, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Uh, what if it shot one giant bullet <laughs> named Bullet like Bill bullet from Mario? <laughs> Mario. Oh yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm totally got in. The, the, the frowny shark face on it. <laughs> wasn't wasn't that mountain? Wasn't that mountain top? Um, <laughs> going from there. Uh, so we have uh, serotonin. What kind of raid do you want to see in Witch Queen? Combat heavy, puzzle heavy, jumping heavy, heavy. I, I really want to see kind of like a puzzle heavy raid considering the raid is going to take place inside of the downed pyramid. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. No, no, knowing how much, you know, the pyramid has kind of like messed with people's minds would love to see something like that. Yeah. I would, I would say either puzzle or, or weapon heavy or a mixture of both. I think that like, if we ever had a raid that was only like 95% jumping puzzle, I think people would riot. Because <laughs> uh, that, that would just be, yeah, I think people would be would be mad. It's like, we waited yeah. for this? Just a jumping That'd puzzle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, Bungie usually crushes it with their their uh, their raids. They usually knock them out of the park. So, yeah, what, whatever they do, I'm, I'm, I'm in. 95% jumping puzzles. I'm just thinking of the beginning of King's Fall where you got to jump from ship to ship. But yeah. that's the entire raid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the whole raid. Oh boy, that and dick walls. Yeah. Oh yeah, just <laughs> mwah, that would be beautiful. There has to be some sort of like mind fuck element to it, <laughs> just like because that's yeah. the yeah. nature of the beast. That is the nature yeah. of yeah. Savathun. So, like, we'll we'll just have to see. I'm very I'm very excited. Um, Cliff ninety nine asks, "Do you think that? Uh, do y'all think that we need a revamp on how we level up our characters? And do you think we should revamp how we do armor and armor mods? Probably, but I probably, but I don't know what that how? would be. How? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, yeah I, I have no idea. I think that people are tired of the regular power grind. I think it was a good call when they did the thing where they were like, oh yeah, we'll change it." If it's like a, a little season to a little season, then it's only what a ten jump yeah, in power. Boost. You don't yeah. you don't need to do that like the big one. But then for like Witch Queen, the big power boost. I'm like, yeah, that's fine because it's a whole new year of the game, a whole new year of content, yada yada mm -hmm. yada. I th I think All that right. makes sense. Uh, I still think that some people are tired of the power grind the way it is. Yeah, so I think I I'd yeah I'd be open I to a change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I just don't know what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're you're right on the money. It um it has reached to the point of uh, of of being really kind of tedious. The normal power grind. Yeah. You go out, do your powerfuls, do your or your pinnacles, and all that kind of stuff yeah. for the purpose of making number bigger. And <laughs> uh, I'm I was right on board. Really happy that they decided to drop down that 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 grind from plus fifty like per season to plus ten. So mm -hmm. much better. And um, but but same. I I I don't know what they'd replace this system with. And when it comes to like armor mods and perks and all that kind of stuff, the only, the only real big thing that I could that I could fathom wanting to see is loadouts. Yeah, please give us a way to save. That loadouts. would be great. Yeah, I I'm so tired of swapping mods. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what you'd do with with armor. Um, yeah, when it comes to power, G um, I believe that was G Cot in chat said. Uh, a bounty re revamp, which I think is probably 90% why that grind is rough <laughs> overall. Because you're just like stacking bounties every yeah. season. Like yeah. whenever you're it. preparing for the next season of content, if you make content or if you want to be in like world first raids, other activities of that ilk when something like that drops, you have to stack bounties so that you can grind out that uh the um oh so you can so you can pound out 
the ticket or the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the season pass. He, it, it's just <laughs> like, it's frustrating in that regard. Right. Um, but it's, I don't know. I, I think that they, they do need to do something with that portion. At least think about that when it comes to Witch Queen and the world first stuff. Right. Um, no, completely yeah. agree. Oh, uh, let's see here. So, Austin eight or V two games. Seeing that we're getting closer and closer to the thirtieth anniversary, I should ask this: Do we uh, do we think we're going to get to know more about the nine, or are we not going to learn anything? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I nine. who are they? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I would honestly be surprised if we ever hear from the nine before <laughs> the final shape. Yeah, I would agree. Cause, yeah, because like right now everything seems to be super hyper focused on uh, Sabathun, Zebu, and the pyramids. Pyramids. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No clue. Yeah. yeah I. <laughs> That's yeah, going like, to be one of those narrative threads that doesn't get touched upon. Probably, I was, I was about to say, I was about to say, and with previous history, as, yeah. as, as we've seen, it took Aldrin a year to reappear into the game, if not more. So, right. where's Rasputin, those... by the way? Oh, he's sleep. The <laughs> nine are just going to walk in in. somewhere. Sleep. <laughs> he's sleeping an engram somewhere. <laughs> the nine are just going to walk into your kitchen in their underwear, eating a bowl of your cereal, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> What's up, bro? Um, I'm still upstairs in the attic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know we're planets, and then just disappear. <laughs> That'll be the revelation. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, Gray Fox with the final question of the evening, also pertain pertaining to the 30th anniversary coming up. What is something that Bungie has made uh, that made you a lifetime fan? that isn't destiny related so outside of destiny what has bungie made that made you a lifetime fan oh it's i feel like that's a i don't know i i for a lot yeah of easy people. for me yeah i don't know about for other people no, maybe what? New has bungie worked on another major franchise beyond <laughs> destiny isn't this their first game <laughs> yeah it's their first one right yeah yeah, dude, I uh, met my my future wife to be here playing Halo. Like, it's, Halo was like the greatest. That was like the first the first IP that I really hardcore got attached to. Yeah, I, I played a lot of other games, which were you know fun mm -hmm. standalone ga standalone games. Like Perfect Dark was really good. Like you know, Golden Eye was really good for you know like old stuff like that. But um, yeah, Halo. Then it was like, oh, this is a it's like a franchise, dude. I never cared about a, a game fran maybe Pokemon I'd cared about as a game yeah. franchise overall, but like Halo was just different, like very different, awesome. Really the first game I ever played like online multiplayer for. Yeah. Uh kind of a life changing game at that point in time. So yeah, hundred percent for me, Halo, without a question. I feel like I would need to think about something else. That would be a challenge. But for me it's Halo. No, like I mean that's it, Halo was such a, a game changing experience for so many people. It was yeah. it, it's absolutely one of the first online first person shooters that I can remember really getting into uh with with, with Halo one and Halo two. I mean I went to I went to land parties for Halo yeah. one <laughs> way back in yeah. the day. And so I, uh, and to go from a franchise like that to then creating another, you know, possibly top 10 gaming franchises of all time in Destiny really yeah. goes to show the level of, uh, of quality and skill and expertise there at Bungie. They knock it out of the park at whatever they, they put their focus on. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's one of the things that I'm really excited about when it comes to the 30th anniversary. It's going to be a compendium. I've said that word like four times over this show, <laughs> but it's going to be a compendium of the history of Bungie games. It's going to be stuff from, it, it, there's going to be references to Halo, there's going to be references to D1, there's going to be references to games that you might not have heard of, stuff that I remember playing back in the day, like Myth, like maybe Oni, like Marathon. I was a yeah. big fan of Marathon back in the day, which it's funny, because I, yeah. I played Marathon 
didn't care at all about the company that made it because it was just like oh hey i loved doom in the 90s and i loved wolfenstein all and all that and marathon was just like my other doom my other my other wolfenstein my other first person shooter and only much later i think it was it might have been after destiny came out where i finally this is embarrassing put two and two together and thought oh this is the same bungee that made marathon way back <laughs> in the day oops but you know i was a fan of myth i was a fan of oni and Again, this is another question like the, the the Prospector one. How many people out there played Oni? How many of y'all remember that? Yeah, I remember it. I never played it, yeah. Way back in the day. I, oh. I was a big fan of that. So I'd, I'd say I'd say those games. That that's that's really the games that kind of put Bungie on the map for me. And then of course, you can't you can't ignore Halo. It's just, it was just such a game changing experience all around. And Halo one, two, and three, playing through those uh with my so brothers. It's just one of one of my great gaming memories for sure see i came in with destiny mm-hmm. i i never That's played wild. halo yeah see yeah. well my Me parents too. were midwest <laughs> very oh, very very strict midwest parents <laughs> yeah okay all right <laughs> with that video game gun down and come pick up this real that's gun the son. devil yeah that's <laughs> that's the devil now chop this wood uh, <laughs> so uh <laughs> so destiny was the first uh first game that i've gone that i've connected with them on so like i'm i'm anticipating uh playing through halo i haven't um i i'm not going to have the same um like feeling fond feelings toward it probably that you guys do because it's it's part of your childhood and i'm coming to it yeah. as an adult <laughs> so <laughs> so um yeah have, you, have you played have you played any i played a bit of the first one I got oh, okay. I got to this point. I got stuck on um, geometry and got frustrated. <laughs> Bungie geometry, that legendary phrase. Funny. Hey, you gotta you gotta go back and pick it up, and you yeah. gotta finish. Yeah, gotta I gotta finish. I gotta pick it pick it right back up at that oh, block dude. I got stuck on. And dude, you gotta do. Oh my god, I uh, I love her to death. But uh, Sarah Daniels a while ago mm-hmm. was streaming was streaming a first time playthrough of uh, Halo of every Halo. Yeah. And with the Master Chief Collection, there's a feature where you can do old graphics mm. or new graphics. Right. And uh, as like a purist, watching Halo One in the new graphics, like I wanted to throw up. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to throw up. Yeah. And I wanted to yell. And like, that's not to say the old graphics are always better. Like in Halo, like mm-hmm. in I don't know, in two and three, you could go either way. But like. Halo One, there was something. It was like it was different. It looked weird. It looked shiny yeah. and, and cool and different. And like I can't explain it. And like if you if you're listening at home and you want to get ready for Infinite and you want to play through all the Halos or whatever, like and you're on Halo One, do the old graphics, please. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're better than the new graphics. The new graphics suck. I want to yell and cry and vomit crap all at the same time. Just don't do it. That do sounds like graphics. a condition, dude. Uh, yeah, I might need to call I'll get a doctor. That looked, yeah, I get that looked <laughs> yeah, at power before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah those are all the questions fit to print and i'll keep that in mind i'll keep the i'll, I'll keep it in mind Dude, you keep you keep it. that in mind i will i will good. fall out good 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 yeah <laughs> worth play by the way wasn't moon supposed to be here tonight she was supposed to be here tonight but family what, kept what her the away. hell is that about so here's the thing <laughs> i don't want to hear it moon moon was like I'm going to be on this podcast and then and then her yeah. family said, but chop this wood. And so that's <laughs> this wood. So she's out there. She's, she's, chopping, out there. she's chopping wood. She's chopping, she's chopping wood. wood literally right now. Yeah, she's chopping yeah. wood right now. Keeping uh, the whole fam warm. Geez. Enough firewood for all the winter. <laughs> I'll hunt her down and harass her later. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Make sure she's got that firewood. I will. <laughs> Better have you got it. a Rick for me? <laughs> But all right, I do believe that brings us to the end of episode 300 of the Planet Destiny podcast. Certainly one for the record books. I can't believe we've gotten 300, 300 episodes. Good for you guys. Good for, good for you all. Good for you guys. You were here for it. I was here yeah. for some of them. Good for, this good is partially all, your good fault. for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah. you're the reason that we're here, Paul. Yeah. This is, good, good for all of us. Yay. Right. It, it, this is reasonably, partially <laughs> your, uh, your, your, your charge, too. <laughs> if this were a crime, you'd be going to jail for it. <laughs>
But man, after 300 episodes, 300 episodes of tons of fun, good conversations, great guests, a fantastic game. I cannot thank you guys enough for sticking around as long as you have through all the iterations of the Planet Destiny podcast, through all the different hosts, all the different subjects, all the different talks, all the different skits we've gone through. (laughs) It's mind blowing to me to think that we've made it this far and we only have because you guys keep listening. So thank you again for tuning in and thank you again for joining us tonight for the 300th episode, Mr. Fallout Plays, former host, current world champ. (laughs) <laughs> Mr. Beard Man himself. Uh, champ so of what we don't know. But thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Cool as hell that we all made it this far. It's just it's just awesome. Love Woo! all you guys. Appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you so much for joining. It is great to see you again, buddy. Likewise. <laughs> like old times. But uh, of course, you know, before we get on out of here, we are going to give you an opportunity to take the floor, let everybody know where they can find you all across the interwebs. So if you would. Starting with me. Yeah. Starting with you. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, youtube.com slash falloutplays, twitch.tv slash falloutplays, and on Patreon, falloutplays. Shockingly, no one yet going for the lemon bar tier. One day. One day. Okay. The, the well, sacred, explain, the sacred it, rare yes, lemon bar please. tier will be achieved. I can't believe that no one has... I'm not going to explain that either. You got to look that shit up on your own. <laughs> I mean, so, That's thank, even better. Thank you. Thank oh, you very much. Find me all around... Fallout plays. Appreciate y'all. It's a magical M. Night Shyamalan tier. You have to buy it to find out what's going on with it. All right, we're going into incognito mode. Let's figure this out. (laughs) Yeah, don't Google lemon bars. Don't tell. Don't tell it on the microphone. Let the let the people at home figure it out. All right. You gotta figure. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Something good. Something real good. (laughs) Got to get on there and get it. But listen, the number one thing you need to do. Ask him about whether or not shotgun barrels affect the range and the accuracy Jesus of the weapon. Christ. And the pellet spray. Those are important <laughs> things. And I don't mean the actual barrel perks. I mean the length of the barrel on the model <laughs> of the weapon. Listen, it was a whole saga. God, we couldn't go without was, mentioning God, it there. Appreciate you. <laughs> but no, it was great to have you here, man. We love you, brother. Thanks, buddy. Good stuff. Uh, Nim, what about you, buddy? Uh, pretty much Nim plays uh, everywhere. I'm actually going to be streaming some Dead by Daylight shortly after I get mm. food after the the show. So yeah, both of y'all uh, have been playing that a lot, right? It's mad fun. I love it. It's so good. Yeah. Big but yeah, that asymmetric uh, warfare, huh? That's right, baby. Oh, uh, that's yeah. That's that's been my jam for a bit. Like it started with Predator Hunting Grounds. That's actually how like yep. my friend got me into Dead by Daylight. She was like, hey. You might dig this here. Play, try, give it a try. And I that game sunk its teeth so far into my veins, dude. <laughs> so deep, so deep. <laughs> Who's your current favorite monster? My namesake. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer. Even true. with his yeah. piano teeth, nemesis. With his big ass chompers, dude. He's <laughs> great. My boy, my boy, Nemi. Mm. That punch but, uh, is just so satisfying, dude. I don't know what it is that it just feels boom. good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Fun. I like it. You, you stay true to your roots. Instead of picking <laughs> Snoo Snoo with the uh, the Huntress, you just, <laughs> run, you just roll. Yes, I watched your video fall Damn out. Damn right. I'm so happy you made that reference right now. <laughs> you, and like, you and like 13 other people watched that video. I appreciate each and every one of you. <laughs> Listen. Shout it's... out to the homies who watch the non-D2 content on YouTube. <laughs> Shout out to them. Look, that'll be for the next episode where we talk about <laughs> content creation. How hard it is to break out of uh, a typecast for the channel. <laughs> Man, it's fun to watch. Dead by Daylight's a really fun game to watch. I yeah, uh, yeah. I I enjoy the clips Nim puts up and the videos you guys put out because it's just whew, good times, good stuff there. But all right, Dan Finity, what about you, man? Oh, hi. My name's Dan Finity. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and the TikTok at Dan Finity, where the eyes are else. You can also find me on Twitch three days a week. Twitch.tv forward slash Danfinity. This, uh, for the next couple weeks, I'm just, I'm off, I'm off for vacation. So I'm, yeah. I'm kind of preparing for the next iteration of what Planet Destiny is to become. Our evolution, as it were, when we return uh, before Witch Queen. So thanks everybody for coming and hanging out. Uh, go follow Fallout Plays. Don't follow me. I dare you not to. <laughs> no, no, do both. Do no, both. don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Just, don't, don't, do it. <laughs> don't, don't you dare. Oh, don't That's do it. it. 
That's it for You're me. gonna follow the wrong one on Twitter anyway. I oh right my god. <laughs> she oh she infuriates me, man. She just showed up out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> anyways. But yeah, so I'll be I'll be doing some design work for like overlays and stuff for what what's coming up with uh Planet Destiny soon. So nice. and keep it keep an eye out on this channel because we might be doing like a an anniversary uh episode. I think that's yeah. in talks. Yeah. So keep an eye out. We'll see. Right on. And of course, my name is The Black Link. You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at The Black Link. Haven't had much time for, for any sort of content creation outside of the usual with the uh, the, the new job position, as yeah. it were. Um, I do definitely not going to have any time for any streaming this week. As we get closer to Christmas, my job gets kind of... <laughs> logistics mm -hmm. gets kind of crazy, shall right. we say. Um, got, a lot of, got a lot of presents to deliver over the holiday season. But, you know, if we do have time for streams, it's usually anywhere from uh, about 10, 11 a.m. till about 1, 2 in the afternoon Eastern Time. And, uh, of course, any Destiny news videos will be going up on the Planet Destiny YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Planet Destiny. But all right, everybody, that's it for episode 300 of the Planet Destiny podcast, your guide to this week in Destiny. Thanks so much for sticking around for 300. Here's to 300 more after a short hiatus we're not giving a date on when we're coming back it's just gonna be a maybe <laughs> no you're you're just gonna look at the feed and you're gonna be like man i miss those guys oh, oh they're back that's when we'll return it's gonna be so good <laughs> but all right everybody well, thank you so much for 300 we'll see you all in the next one